as, um, as a citizenship judge, I get to swear in a lot of people, and it's really a wonderful day because it's the best day of their life. But as I do that, and I go through many of the new Canadians, I ask the question, what does it really mean? You know, is it just getting a passport? Because you see, the difference between a permanent resident and a Canadian citizen is only two things. One, you get to vote as a citizen, and two, uh, you get to sit in a, in a jury. That's it. The permanent resident in Canada has all the same rights and responsibilities that a citizen have, aside from voting and sitting in a jury. So why Canadian citizenship? Why would someone go through the process in getting that? I think citizenship comes with a sense of belonging. Let me explain a bit more about that. Citizenship, the concept of citizenship is still relatively new in the history of humanity. In the past, we were not citizens. We were subjects of a king, or a ruler, or an emperor, or even the pope. And what they decided, we did. That was the condition. We got to live in this land, we got to work on this land, but we all remain subjects of someone. Citizenship gives you voice. You now have a franchise. You can say, through your vote who you want to lead you. So that's why suddenly the dynamics change because the leader actually has to listen to you. So this, the concept of citizenship, even though it's new in a, in a timeline of civilization, gives people franchise. And I think that's the important part of citizenship. So in Canada, we have the country Canada has the largest conversion rate from immigration to citizenship in the world. And I think that speaks well about Canada. And I think the reason why it's so high in Canada is because we not only bring you here, we ask you to be part of our society. We actually encourage you to contribute to our society. We welcome you into our society. Some will call it multiculturalism. I, it's the in, I agree, and I also think, think there's the integrative effect, so that we're suddenly we're now bigger than one. I, I think the advantage of being a new Canadian in Can, a new citizen in Canada is that you had to make two decisions before this point. The first decision, you had to, you had to decide whether to leave your home country and come here. The second decision is, I would not only come to this land and live in this land and stay in this land and work in this land, I would now become part of this land as a citizen. So that's why, now that you've made those two decisions, this land is yours. Therefore, you should be adding to it. Let me then take it another step. We recognize that this land is the land that we stand on in Canada as the traditional territory of many indigenous peoples for hundreds of years, if not thousands of years. We recognize that now. But there can be a condition where we can say, well, yes, but I recognize it, but what has that got to do with me? One of the beauties of the First Nations and the indigenous population was that they were very welcoming when, when the settlers first came here. They shared, but one of the things that they, in sharing the land and the space with us, was that they also were good stewards of the land. They looked after the land. So as a new Canadian, I would say this to you. If you want to recognize the fact that we're now in Canada and the fact that we're in indigenous lands and the traditional territory of many indigenous cultures and, and nations, you also have a responsibility to steward the land. You have a responsibility to look after the air, to look after the water, to look after the land. You have free use of that. You can take as much air as you want. In taking it, I think as new Canadians, as Canadians in this land now, in recognizing the First Nations and the indigenous land territory, that we return the air to its pristine self after we use it. That's the difference. And I think that way we honor the indigenous peoples and that's how we can also be part of the reconciliation process. When 
Winston Churchill famously said, famously said that democracy is one of the worst forms of government, except there's no, no, nothing else better. I paraphrase him. And it's true. It is a big word. It is a messy word, taken different takes on it and worked at it different ways. I agree with that. However, I would also say this to you. It is good that we have a messy democracy because in its messiness, we recognize everybody. It's only, I would only be cautious if democracy has only one face or one side. Then I would say we have a difficulty. So it's the inclusiveness of democracy that I like, and it's the fact that you can be a participant in the democracy that is important. So again, coming back to citizenship, in coming to Canada, own your democracy. I think there's a need to help to promote each other. I think as a community, the Chinese Canadian community, can do a lot more in not just recognizing the traditional leaders that we have in our community, but to seriously identify the youth, the young men and women that we have right now who are brilliant and to help and champion them. That's what we need to do.